It's another exciting day in the world of AI. A few minutes ago, Microsoft announced that they just launched their Bing Image Creator. Let's jump in and take a look at it. Now, in order to use this, you do have to have a Microsoft Bing account. I just use my Gmail to log in, so no big deal. It's kind of the same deal you have with using their version of ChatGPT that's built into Bing as well. Now first, let's take a look at the UI. You'll notice it's quite nice overall. I like the dark theme. You have a place up here at the top where you can add a prompt. Over here, this icon is interesting. It looks like you can pay to use some sort of boost to speed up the processing of your image. You get a few credits each day. I don't know if you can actually buy those. We'll take a look at that. There's a create button and then surprise me. So surprise me, I'm assuming just generates sort of a random prompt for you. And Microsoft says this is built on top of Dolly, which makes sense since they have such a large investment already in OpenAI. Here's some example images that Bing has put together to showcase. These also have the prompt right there along with them. Down below, they have some frequently asked questions. What is Image Creator? How do I use it? Oh, here's the interesting one. How do Microsoft Rewards work? If you run out of boost, you have the option to use Microsoft Rewards. So this is things like cashback shopping and other usage of their tools. Sounds like you can earn credits to do extra boosts. So let's take a look at this thing and see what type of results it actually creates. If you've ever used Dolly before, it's cool, but the results aren't exactly stellar. Now I have a hunch here that this is not actually running the same version of Dolly that OpenAI has out publicly, just like Bing is powered by GPT-4 and it was powered by GPT-4 well before OpenAI's own chat GPT was, I'm guessing that this is running a new version of Dolly that we're gonna see released in the next few weeks. For our first prompt, we'll do Spider-Man surfing. Like this, they have little tips here. So try a cowboy riding a horse in space, watercolor. So they're just trying to teach people how to actually use prompts. Not bad, this is about what I would expect back from Stable Diffusion or something similar. All right, let's make this a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna actually pull up Stable Diffusion and Invoke AI, and then let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. All right, we've got Stable Diffusion up and running. Here's one of the images that I created using Stably Diffused Wilds and in Invoke AI. Now you can see 30 year old woman in a city, intricate feminine face, and all of the other prompt details you would expect. Let's drop that in and see what we get back. It actually is using my boosts automatically. So this is speeding up the image creation process by default. It's also worth noting, it looks like it creates four images as well by default. Let's take a look at these. Not bad, it's pretty natural lighting. Let's see what the others look like. This one's a little bit more artificial looking in the face details. Not bad overall. Now, one thing I really like here is in their UI, it actually saves your images over here on the right rail, which is nice. I think a lot of other systems could use that sort of UI. All right, let's try another person. This one's a 20 year old cyberpunk woman in a futuristic cyberpunk city. Go ahead and select all that. One interesting thing is I don't see a place to add a negative prompt. Fortunately, I don't use a lot of negative prompts, but I'm surprised they don't have that in here. All right. I uh, don't know what's going on with the eyes there. Stable Diffusion does this sometimes, right? This is why you have that face fix feature. Let's take a look at some of the others, see if they came out better. Not bad, the lighting on this one's pretty good. It looks fairly natural overall on the body portions. This one a little bit less realistic. Again, the eyes just aren't quite right. And this one looks like the stuff of nightmares. All right, this one's pretty cool. Sci-fi mechanical human heart. I've shown this off in a couple of my other videos. Let's see how Bing does. This is actually really cool. Now you can see when you get into some of the really fine details over here, maybe the gears, it loses a little bit of the sort of magic of the realism, but overall that's not too bad. Let's take a look at a couple of these others. This one's pretty good. You see it's heart shaped. I actually think this adhered to the prompt maybe even better than my stable diffusion version. That one's really cool. Oh, interesting. This almost has an organic real heart inside of this sort of biomechanical heart. That's pretty neat. Next up, let's try some interior shots. These prompts were actually generated by ChatGPT. I asked it what the ideal parameters were for an interior design shot, and it came up with this list. What does Bing think about this? Oh, super industrial. Interesting. This looks like some sort of industrial kitchen. This has multiple sets of lights up here, which is interesting. There are a lot of lights. Take a look at another one. Same thing. Super industrial and rustic looking, but kind of a cool aesthetic. This one's almost there. Look, you can see that the lights, the ropes or the chains or whatever are, that are hanging them aren't quite there, but otherwise this one has a really cool look to it. Fairly natural lighting, nice ma natural materials. And this last one, again, lots of lights. It really likes to throw in extra lights. I'd say everything, if you, if you subtract the lights out of the image, everything else looks like it could be pretty photorealistic. 
not a bad look. All right, for this series of stable diffusion photos, I actually just asked it a really simple prompt. I said close up macro photo of alien insects, and I really like the results that came back. Let's see if Bing can match that. You know, sometimes these really simple prompts like this actually get back better results than if you go overboard and try to add a whole bunch of detail to them. Uh, these already look pretty nightmarish. Let's see. I will say this actually looks like it could be a real macro shot of some sort of weird insect. Oh, holy cow. That's terrifying. Oh man. I love the detail of these, the front like mandibles, the antenna, even the eyes. These are actually pretty good. These are some of my favorites. It's just this robotic cyborg. So you can see complex 3D render, ultra detailed, a beautiful porcelain profile, woman, android face, cyborg robotic parts. They came back with all these really cool, highly detailed, really intricate images of these robotic women. All right, Bing, let's take a look. Yeah, look at all the detail just here on the side of the face, all the wires and cables. It's not quite the same aesthetic, but that's okay. Sometimes you want a little bit different art style. This is still really cool overall. Nice. You can see the, the prompt portion that mentions the porcelain face. You can see this definitely has that porcelain kind of doll-like look to it. And some of these have that metallic sheen, very mechanical still, lots of wires and cables, really cool overall. Now, probably my daughter's favorite stable diffused images. These are a high quality 3D render, hyper-realist, very cute, multi-pastel, dotted, fluffy, tarantula cat hybrid. What a mouthful, but these come out pretty cool. I think I've got a couple more up here. Yeah, my daughter just, like I said, she absolutely loves these. They're super fluffy and cute. I don't know if there's ever gonna be a tarantula cat hybrid, but if there is, I hope it's as cute as these. What are you gonna come back with, Bing? Let's find out. Uh, these might be a little less on the cute side and a little bit more on the terrifying side. Bing overall, I've noticed, has this sort of edge towards being a little bit more, uh, I don't know, scary, terrifying, weird, but it's interesting nonetheless. Oh man, yeah, that's horrifying. If I saw this running towards me, I would definitely run the other direction. Let's take a look at the last one. Eh, it's a little cuter, but still, I don't know. Maybe it's the legs. I'm not running into this thing in the hallway. All right, and for this prompt, I took that ultra complex 3D render, but I added that it should be an NVIDIA RTX 3090 GPU. And I think overall this did a really good job. These look like designs that NVIDIA might actually come up with, other than a couple of these, right? They're pretty interesting, and I think I wanna see what Bing does with this prompt. Oh, these look really interesting. This looks like a CPU socket. Yeah, I can see what that's going for there. Very cool. I like the circuit board, all the wires, very dystopian feel to it. Same thing here. This looks like a CPU socket of some sort and a motherboard. Again with this one, but it's a wider angle. Pretty cool. You lose a lot of the details in the background, some of the wires and cables and things like that. But overall, pretty cool look. It's some sort of robot human hybrid. So not quite the same. It didn't really follow the NVIDIA RTX 3090 portion as much. And maybe it's because of these extra words here at the front. Let's actually pull everything else out and we'll just say NVIDIA RTX 3090 GPU. I'm wondering if it does better with sort of smaller, more straightforward and to the point prompts. Yeah, there we go. That's that's more like it. So I think it was getting thrown off by some of the other wording in there. This looks more like what you'd expect from a standard video card. Still not quite as detailed and, and I would say as polished as the results I was getting back from Stable Diffusion, but not bad, this is totally usable. Especially if you were creating like a YouTube thumbnail or something like that, and you're just throwing this in the background. I've gotta say, for a first entry into the space, that's a pretty cool result from Bing, especially for a tool that's just free and accessible to anyone on their website. This is really getting Stable Diffusion out there to the masses, and that's exactly what we wanna see. More people using this stuff, more people experimenting, access to everyone. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this better than Stable Diffusion or does it still have some work to go? You be the judge, you let me know. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. Hit that like and subscribe button so you can see more content like this. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thank you all so much. See ya.